Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tabmock99. Now as you can see from the Sonya t-shirt and also the Sonya watch, you know what that means. It's combat time. That's right. Today's video is going to be all about Sonya. Specifically, her ring toss. Is her ring toss move fueled by her inner magic, her inner chi, or is this created by some kind of high-tech device that she brings with her, some kind of military thing? Well, let's get right into it and find out. Best way to start that would be to look at how Sonya's ring toss works in the actual games. So here's a montage of Sonya's ring toss throughout Mortal Kombat history. Let's start with MK1, MK3, MK4, MK Armageddon, kind of a big gap there, MK versus DC, MK9, MKX, and finally MK11. <laughs> hey, there we go. But no matter how many times you look at that and analyze it, there's still a debate. It's still ambiguous. You know, there's still some wiggle room. Is it high tech stuff or is it magic? Is it her chi? So in some way, it doesn't even make a difference, right? I mean, there's that quote from Arthur Clarke. It says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That's basically Clarke's third law right there. But how does that apply to Sonya? I mean, I would like to know, is that something that she has with her or is that something that, you know, inside of her or is that something that she brings with her to the fight? So let's take a look at some other stuff. Um, you know, MK Defenders of the Realm. That's like the one adaptation outside of the games where you actually see Sonya do a ring toss. Here's that. Who wants to wear my ring? Okay. Other than that, she's never done a ring toss. Like in the live action movies and stuff like that, you don't really see her do it. So they kind of leave a lot of uh, stuff to the imagination here. And you know, when they leave stuff like this to the imagination, Fans go nuts. Fans come up with their own theories, and sometimes one fan's theory contradicts another fan theory, but that's kind of the fun of it, you know, is to speculate. And then, of course, when we have the opportunity to dig deeper. So let's take a look at this. This is Sonya in the new movie, and it looks like, for the first time, they're actually going to show Sonya's move in a live-action format. So not a cartoon like we saw before, but for real, there's a live action movie that's going to have Sonya given the respect she deserves, you know, given the same treatment that she gets in the game. And I think a lot of Sonya fans and a lot of Mortal Kombat fans in general are kind of looking forward to this. This is going to be like a true adaptation of Sonya straight from the games onto the big screen. Now, this image fueled a lot of debate in the community. Uh, for example, on a recent episode of the Realmcast, let's listen to that. One thing I would really like to to like praise is the fact that they gave Sonya energy rings. It's from what I can see, rather yes. than making it tech. They look yeah. just like the energy rings that I loved back in MK One. Uh, you know, I didn't mind the fact that they turned it into tech in the later games. Of course, because, you didn't. <laughs> well, you know, it it gets rid of that. You know, every warrior has an arcane or whatever that, that they're that's using. That's Mortal in this Kombat. Movie. That's what we want. Okay, awesome. So the debate continues, right? So the other day, I finally decided, let me ask the man himself. Let me ask John Tobias. And here's how that looked. I said to John Tobias, can you clear up a little mystery around Sonya, specifically the nature of her ring toss? Does this extend from some kind of inner chi power of hers, or is it intended to be produced from a high-tech mechanical device? Inquiring minds want to know. Now, what's funny is I had a bunch of people comment saying, oh, of course it's magic, or of course it's high-tech stuff. But, you know... I understand the different opinions. I presented both options there. I didn't really want to know what the opinions were. I wanted to know from the man himself, John Tobias, how does it all work? And fortunately, he responded. Check this out. He says, good news and bad news. Good news is I'll answer the questions in a thread with everything you need to know about the inception of Sonya Blade's ring pulse. The bad news is, well, you'll have to read to the end. When we could tie a projectile to a character theme, we did, like Sub-Zero's Ice or Raiden's Lightning. But sometimes we just let the functional aspects of the projectile drive the need, like Johnny's Green Blob or Sonya's Ring Pulse. In terms of how Sonya's projectile was developed, Ed was looking for a quick, simple thrusting or casting motion. On our shoot, Liz Malecki, who played Sonya, tried a few different options before she landed on the basic pose. I clearly remember thinking, that's the one. Later, I combined body parts from a different pose to get to the end result you see in the game. We created the pulse ring projectile concept when I created the art. Ed, of course, did the hard work of coding the actual move, and he created the button combo to trigger it. And, in my mind, Sonya's ring pulse was a manifestation of her chi. But we never really articulated that. I also think the concept of her bracelets being military hardware strengthens her characterization. 
sorry, I'm not going to solve your debate. So fight on, people. But you know, the funny thing is, for me, that does solve the debate. So I do want to give a huge shout out to the real Cybot, John Tobias, for answering the question. He really took his time and gave a nice, detailed answer. So make sure you follow him on social media if you don't already. Now, I do want to say one other thing. Building on that, Master Daniel Piscina, Johnny Cage himself, but also kind of the choreographer from the original games, shared some behind-the-scenes video footage of Liz Malecki actually doing that move. So check this out. I want to show you some different options they had going on there. So that's Liz. That's Elizabeth Malecki. And there she's doing kind of an underhand movement to get the rings going. In fact, they didn't even really think of them as rings yet. So here she is just kind of doing an underhanded uh, general projectile move, and they would fill out what it is later. Now they're doing it a different way. Look, she reaches behind her, and she kind of throws it overhead. So they always do this um, several different times. You know, they always kind of come up with a couple different ways to do the move, and then they try and film the same move several times in a row. That way, however it looks best on camera, they can go with those sprites. So here they are giving her different suggestions. You know, they're coming up with a new way to do it. She's kind of doing a, a pushing motion, like a pushing forward kind of a thing. That's really cool. Now in a second, Dan Piscina himself is going to go in there and he's going to really choreograph her and kind of demonstrate firsthand how he wants it to go. So this is Danny's suggestion. Do it like that. I love that. You know, I could kind of see the, where, yeah, it's coming from her chi. I could also kind of see where it's coming from her energy bracelets. There she is. That's the move they ended up going with. Now, like John Tobias said, he did end up touching it up a little bit later, so it doesn't look exactly like it, but that's the pose that they used before they edited the sprites. So there you go. It was a really cool answer from John Tobias, and it was really awesome to see the video from Dan Pesina. So make sure you follow both of those Mortal Kombat legends on social media. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to the description uh, in the description at the end of this video. So check this out. There's more stuff, believe it or not. For example, in the MK3 collector's book, the official collector's book from MK3 in the chapter on Sonya, it says, Sonya's inner strength allows her to focus her body's energy into rings of force that she can fire at her adversaries. So there you go. That seems pretty clear. Um, now, if that wasn't enough, for the longest time, you didn't really see how it worked in the game. I guess the technology wasn't really there. Um, in MK Armageddon, you know, after Sonya rescues Taven, there's like a scene where she's pressing some buttons but it doesn't really say what she's doing. Is she uh, logging her activity somewhere? Is she communicating with her superiors? It was kind of ambiguous. There was nothing to suggest that her rings were coming from that. But in MK9, they got a little bit more detailed with it. So look at MK9 for a minute. Look at her intro. I guess I'll have to do this the hard way. So that was something. You can clearly see that she's talking to her superiors. Now also, and the scene where Jax loses her, his arms, Sonya uses her wrist guards to cauterize the wounds, you know, to stop the bleeding. Check this thing out. So I love that stuff. Um, and that was kind of like, okay, is, are they doing something new? Is this like a, a new thing? Is this like a retcon? Or are they simply interpreting the old games? I don't think they necessarily consciously were making a change of any kind. I think it was just kind of a natural extension of how they saw her character. But check out what they did in MK11. That's right. So they made Sonya fight without her gloves. So it was like she was powerless. And then in the next scene, they give those gloves back to her. Check this out. Lieutenant. He needs a medevac. We're going to have to fight our way out to the rendezvous. You'll need these. So yeah, they are definitely making the case now that they're going with tech. Even though in the beginning, that's not how they saw it. They really saw it more of as her uh, inner strength kind of a thing. So I think it's really cool how we see both sides of the debate. Um, and if you really wanted to like kind of internally wrap these two up together, think of it as Cyclops from X-Men. You know, he's, he's got the internal power on his own, but he does need that visor to help him focus it. So if you wanted to combine them both and say, yes, she has her inner energy, but she also needs the tech to help her manage it, well, there you go. We have another example from fiction to help make that happen. So um, if you like this t-shirt, 
then check out Carrie Ann's Gallery. This website is Carrie Ann dot gallery you can get one for yourself it's called kiss 2020 goodbye you can also get a lot of other autographed photos which is great you know not only does she make these available to the fans um, a lot of the other mk actors do you know this really is the greatest timeline you know we can interact with the mortal kombat developers and the actors and they can answer our questions and they can still produce mortal kombat goodness for us i love it so make sure you follow all three of those people i mentioned make sure you follow john tobias make sure you follow master Pasina. make sure you follow carrie hoskins Thank you to everybody for being here and for watching the video. Thank you to the Mortal Kombat developers for their contribution. And I guess at this point, I gotta kiss you goodbye.